Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. It is Tuesday, which means Tag Tuesday. Um, I have kind of a little bit of a backlog of tags to do. Um, so if you've tagged me in a tag and I haven't done it yet, it's because they're still in the queue. It's still coming. Um, I thought about doubling up some, but then this one in particular, I wanted to do on its own. This is the um, how do we rate our books tag. And it was created by, it was created by Emily at Novel Novels, a wonderful channel. You should go check her out. This will all be down below. And I was tagged by Marcella and Marcella and her books. Now I have, this tag's been going around for quite some time and I think it's a great tag, but I've always been a little wary of it. So I've waffled in between, um, oh, I can't do this because it just doesn't really work for me. And I need to do this because I'm always having to explain my rating system. So I am actually really glad Marcella tagged me because now I have to do it. And um, the reason I wanted to keep this one on its own is because I think this is, this, if I do this tag, then I have something to refer people back to when they want to know how I rate things. So there we go. There are nine prompts for this. And um, I will stick as close as I can to the prompts. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 you'll see why. So the first question is, um, how often do you DNF and what makes you DNF? So I have, um, in a weekly reads video a couple weeks ago, um, I talked, I had a little existential crisis about DNFing books and, um, monkey brain and all that. You can go find it. I am a firm believer in DNFing books. You, you life is too short to read books that aren't working for you. That being said, I don't DNF books very often, um, mostly because I was raised not to quit. <laughs> it's like DNFing is quitting. That's stupid. I understand it. Um, so I am really working on giving myself the permission to DNF books more often. So yes, in theory, DNFing is something people should do. I just need to work on it. So I don't do it as much um, as I probably should, unless it's a soft DNF. For example, um, I recently DNF'd a book because I just started it. It was a thriller and it was like early November that I started it. And I just realized I read a lot of these sorts of books in October and I just want a little break. So I'm still going to read that book just later. <laughs> so a soft DNF or, or um, an NRN, I'm not right now. Okay. Now the next series of questions are about like, do you give uh, certain star ratings. So I'm going to kind of break away from the prompts right here to kind of explain how I rate my books. <sighs> yes, ultimately I give star ratings, but that's only because to log them in the spreadsheet that I use to log my rating and on Goodreads or Storygraph, star read, stars are sort of the language that they use. However, that's not what I think about when I rate books. I think about it more like a letter grade, like you would get in school. I don't know if they do this everywhere, but in the United States, you get it, you know, it's usually A plus to F. I only go to D. Um, and I, I, I give a book a grade. So A plus, A, B plus, B, C plus, C, or D. I guess I could do a D plus. I don't know if I've ever done a D plus, whatever. But then there's a star rating that corresponds to that, which is what I use. So if I pick up a book and I say, oh, this is an A plus book, that's 4.5 stars. And yes, I do give five stars. There's a question about that. I'm going to hold on so I can somewhat stick to the prompts. So my first thought is like, okay, this book I just finished, I would give this book a B plus. I think of it as a B plus. That's an easy way for me to think to encapsulate what I'm thinking about the book. And then when I enter in it, B plus corresponds with 3.5 stars. Now I should say on Goodreads, they do not allow you to do half stars. So I always round up. So a B plus on Goodreads would be a four star. Okay. So do you rate books one star? I have done that. Now this kind of feeds into the first question about DNFing. If, if I'm reading a book, um, that would get one star, I probably should DNF it. There are some times when I kind of feel like I have to read the book, like it's for a book club or something. Um, then it's a little, you know, then that's a little different, but I do give one star. It's just not very often. And to me, a one star is a D. I don't go to F, but D that's a, that's not good. Um, what is a two star book to you? That's question three, by the way, a two star book is a C, which means, um, you know, you, you did the bare minimum to complete the assignment, if that makes any sense. So, um, I am reading a mystery novel. There is a mystery in it. 
it's not a great mystery, but there is a mystery, but it just isn't very good. Um, that would be a C to me because you did the bare minimum to meet the, the most basic requirements of that book. Um, and is a question four, is a three star book good for you? So to me, a three star book is a B and that's good. A B is good. It's not fantastic, but it's like, okay, you understand what you're supposed to do. You succeeded in that. You may not have succeeded in a way that I will remember it forever um, or that I'm wowed by, but you did succeed in what you were doing. This was a successful book. So to me, a three star is actually a good rating. Um, I think three stars are really tricky because that's where people really differ on them. I think of, you know, to me, a three star is not bad. I have a friend who gives three ratings, three star, four star, five star. So three star is bad. Four star is good. Five star is excellent. So three stars is really, when I see a book on Storygraph that's like th between three and 3.5, I really don't know what to think of that because people see three stars so differently. Okay, question five, what does four stars mean to you? Well, if you've been following along, you know that four stars is an A. You did a great job on this. Fantastic. You got an A. You did exactly what you needed to do. It was successful. I would tell other people to read this book. That's 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 a four star book for me. Um, it is an A. That's very good. Um, and I do do half star ratings. So like 4.5 stars is an A plus. Like this is the best this could be. This is the best this work could be you succeeded to that point. A B plus, you know, you're almost, you know, it, you completed it and you went above and beyond, maybe not to the point of an A, but you you did a great job. A B plus is good. You know, a C plus, you know, yeah, you did what you needed to do. There was definitely some promise there. You Maybe you didn't live up to what you could have done, but you did what you needed to do sort of thing. So I do give half stars. Again, on Goodreads, I round up on half stars. And number seven, do you rate books five stars or often? And what do five star books do to make them that high? So to me, a five star book is a book that I would call one of my all time favorites. It is something that is way beyond a plus. It is something that I either one of two things will happen. One, it is is a book that hit me in such a way that it kind of shook me to my psyche and I feel like it expressed something within me that um, I haven't seen express other. So it's a very personal five star. Um, I have, I've given four or five star books, this, four books, five stars this year. Two of them would fall in that category. Um, Mink River by Brian Doyle and The Beadworkers by Beth Piatote. They're both local books to me. Um, they really capture my world, I think very well. It's not saying that I wouldn't recommend these books because I would recommend them. But if I were to hand someone Mink River, I wouldn't say this was a five-star book, you're going to love it because it may not be a five-star book for them because they're a different person than I am. It's not something that I think that the quality is objectively five stars. I do. I personally think it's great, but I can see why it may not resonate with other people. And then there are other books I just think are amazing and they're above and beyond. The other two um, five-star books I've had this year fall into that category. One was The Postcard by Anne Barrest, which is translated from the French. It's sort of a family story, a little bit historical. It's historical-ish, historical, current day sort of thing. Um, and the other is The River We Remember by William Kent Kruger, um, which is a historical mystery. It's his third standalone. I've given five stars to all three of his standalones. This is the most five star-ish of them all. <laughs> but these are books that I think are objectively, if I give them to someone, I would expect them. I, I would expect this book to be good enough for them to love it. Um, and not saying that they would love it, but cause everyone's different, but that would be my expectation that, that if I were to hand, if I were to hand Mink River to someone, which is one of my subjective five stars, I would say you could read this book and maybe you'll understand more about me because this book really reflects something with me. If I were to hand the postcard to someone, I would say, this is a book I think you're really going to love because it was five stars for me. Does that make sense? So that's my five star. I don't give them, I do not give them often. Uh, number eight, has your rating of books changed over the years? Yes, it has. Um, I kind of, uh, I've really toyed with how to rate books for a long time. And it was really only last year that I decided to do the letter grade method, which is really what works best for me. Otherwise, I end up sort of um, kind of weighing so many things and, you know, trying to come up with some kind of 
absolute rating. Now I will sometimes use the caw pile system to, if, if usually if it's a literary book and I'm really kind of torn on it, I will sometimes use that, which will give me a star rating, which then I put back to a letter grade. But uh, yes, my, my ratings have changed. And I think that, that that's just normal. I think people's ratings do change over time. Um, if they stay the same all the time, what, what are you doing wrong? I don't know. And finally, the last question is, where do you record your, your ratings of your books? So I, um, I do have a spreadsheet online. Um, I am a belong to the Patreon for the Currently Reading Podcast. And as part of being a member of their Patreon, you get access to their tracking spreadsheet that Katie Cobb puts together, which I think is absolutely excellent. It is the best one I have used. Um, and she updates it every year. So it's always, it's always getting better. Um, and she also is great about if like every you know, people are human, mistakes get made, how you can fix things that might not be working quite right in the spreadsheet. Um, and it captures a lot of information. I really enjoy it. It works well for me. Um, you get your basics, which are, you know, title, author, publisher, published date, dates you read, star rating, genre, but then you can record the authors, uh, either you choose how to do this. I do the authors and, uh, nation of origin. So if someone grew up in South Africa, even if they're writing a book set in the United States, which is something that I read last year that just popped into my head, I don't recommend it because it wasn't a good book, but I would put down, that's a South African author. So I, and then it makes a little map to show you what countries you've covered. Um, you can record your mood. I will sometimes, I do add a couple sheets to it to record some things like my owned book count, like how many books do I own and how is that going up or down? Um, and then I also use it with a random number generator to choose my TBR for you know months that I do that. Um, so I use that. And then I also record my star ratings in um, Goodreads. I'm on Goodreads basically because I have, I belong to some groups that I need to be on Goodreads because we use it to communicate with. Not a super big fan of Goodreads though. I will tell you that. Um, I don't think it gives me the information that I need, like like the Storygraph does, which is another place where I record my ratings. Storygraph also will let you do fractions of stars. I only do half star ratings, but Storygraph will let you do quarter star ratings. Um, and it, it collects more information when it gets a rating. And with Goodreads, you give a rating and you can write a review. Whereas Storygraph, you can write a review, but you can also just answer some questions that will give you know, give other readers more information about the book. So Goodreads Storygraph. And then I use the app Bookmory. Um, I'm going to see if I can find a link to it and see if I can put it down there. Um, that's, I like that app because I can time my reading. I can also store my notes, any reading notes that I take um, in the app. Um, and then it will give you, like, you can look at the calendar. I, I would show you, except it's on my phone and I'm filming on my phone, like all the little pictures of the books you finish each month. It's, it's very fun. So that, those are where I, I, um, record my ratings. It really only matters in my spreadsheet though, for my own personal, my own personal usage. So those are the nine questions. Um, I went through this one pretty quickly. Now, of course you want to tag people. Honestly, I don't, I don't know who to tag who hasn't done this. Um, you know, Emily created this a long time ago and a lot of people did it right when it came out because it's a great tag because I've been dilly-dallying about it for months. Um, and again, thank you for myself for tagging me and making me actually do it. Um, so I'm not gonna tag anybody, but if you haven't done this tag, I do recommend doing it, especially, you know, if you're a booktube channel because then you have a place where you can refer people back when you have to explain your ratings. Like if you want to know how I rate, go see this video sort of thing. So I do recommend doing it if you haven't already done this, this tag. But beyond that, I'm not going to tag anybody else. So thank you very much. Um, I uh, Please like, subscribe, join my Patreon. Information is down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.